Uh, hi everyone thank you all for being here tonight it is uh so great to see uh, many new faces and a lot of new uh, uh familiar ones as well uh my name is alfonso uh my pronouns are he him his uh i am from brownsville texas uh originally the ancestral lands of the carrizo comacudo tribe um which is in the southmost part of texas on the border with uh mexico and the gulf of mexico um, and tonight I have the privilege of introducing you to Mutual Amend, uh, for those of you that are new. Uh, so it was formed, Mutual Amend was formed in September 2009, uh, and it's a coalition of hundreds of organizations and hundreds of thousands of individuals committed to social and economic justice, um, ending corporate rule and building a vibrant democracy that is genuinely accountable to the people not to corporate interest. We are calling for the We the People Amendment to the U.S. Constitution that unequivocally states that inalienable rights belong to human beings only and that money is not a form of, free, of protected free speech under the First Amendment and can be regulated in political campaigns. Move to Amend is a nonpartisan nonpartisan. A uh, broad coalition of organizations and individuals who share common values, working together to win corporate personhood and demand real democracy. We welcome all organizations and individuals who embrace accountability and responsibility, both personally and organizationally. Transparency, community, movement building, political and economic independence. A dedication to move to a man's mission, uh, goals and tactics, commitment to anti-oppression within ourselves, our communities, our workplaces, policies, and representation. Move to a man is more just uh, more than just uh, fixing a broken political system. It's about envisioning a future where the voice of every citizen matters, where economic and social justice prevails, and where the power of, of a corporation is checked for the greater good of society. Our work is driven by the belief that the promise of democracy is within our reach, but it requires the active participation and support of people like you. So I, I thank you for joining us tonight in this transformative journey, whether you are an individual uh, seeking to make a difference a leader in, in your community, um, looking to take a stand. And whether this may be the first time that you hear about Mutu Amend, there is a place for you in this movement. Together, let us forge a path toward a more just, inclusive, and accountable democracy. Let us move beyond the limitations of corporate influence and reclaim our democracy for the people. And again, I wanna thank you all for being here tonight. We have um, a really good agenda for you. And right now I'm going to be passing on to Greg, another one of the co-directors for another overview. Oh, there you go. Well, happy, happy summer solstice, everyone. Uh, Greg Coleridge, one of the co-directors, moved to Mend. I come to you from uh, the north uh, shore of this country, along Lake Erie in greater Cleveland area. And I guess I'm supposed to say something about the importance of volunteering and to start with, with Move to Mend. And I want to start by that word of volunteer, which um, I don't know, I've always sort of had a mixed feeling about it, because to me, it never really captures when a person volunteers for uh, anything, um, particularly with an organization like uh, Move to Mend. To me, that doesn't capture the essence of what that person is. 
and does and represents. Better to me is a word that Alfonso just used, and that is leader. Local leader or wherever, you know, whatever environs you may be involved in, uh, working maybe to some extent at a regional level, county level, state level, uh, people who are involved in this work, I look at them as leaders because, and, and that word itself needs to be uh, sort of redefined because in our culture, we tend to think of the leader as sort of a single person who is the John Wayne or Jane Fonda, who all by themselves, you know, does miraculous things and is born naturally with these gifts to go out and just do, you know, these incredible things. And that's not always the case. Rarely is that the case. Um, leaders are individuals who understand the importance of enable. And uh, we do that and we encourage that. And uh, what we hope uh, that is done by people like you and everyone who is connected to, to AMEND, uh, who is not staff, whether board member or people at a, at a state level or local level or individuals, um, do and help extend our efforts in seven ways. Here are the specifics of those seven ways in a moment. But these seven ways are to educate, right? To help people get on the other side of the learning curve. Because, you know, corporate constitutional rights and money is free speech. is not something that we grow up with or that we hear a lot about in our culture, right? I mean, in fact, it's just the opposite. All that stuff has been uh, sort of pushed and repressed. And what we are being trying to do is to unearth uh, all of that and contextualize all that. So educating is very important. Seven. Second is advocate. You know, we're advocating for a systemic legislative constitutional change called the We the People Amendment. Uh, third is to organize. Organize yourself, organize others, however few or however many it is, to get out there and uh, bring people together because all of these seven uh, ways to extend our efforts add up to one single word, and that is power. We are trying power to bring about and to create a movement that uh, brings this change because the guys and gals and others, you know, them in DC who and us do a heck of a lot better job at representing the powers to be to a great extent than they do us. So if they're not going to uh, be the true saviors, then we've got to take charge ourselves. So organizing is a big part of that. Fourth is to communicate. And as mentioned last night on the affiliate call, we have a call once a month for people who are affiliates or advocates. You know, we're not only educators and advocates and organizers, but since the corporate media doesn't do our job for us, and even the progressive media just somewhat nips around the edges on what we're trying to do, because a lot of them don't even get this uh, issue. We got to be our own communicators, whether that's individual, mouth to mouth, phone calling, door to door canvassing, social media, my twit face, whatever it is, you know, getting out there and communicating uh, is very important and a very important piece of what we do. Uh, fifth is the fund. You know, we uh, do need a few shekels uh, to get, get this operation going. We operate on a shoestring, every dollar go. But uh, part of what, um, you know, by getting the word out uh, to others, uh, hopefully they will understand that we are a movement that truly is bottom up. We don't depend financially on people at the top, whether they're corporations, big foundations, political parties, uh, you name it, um, um, uh, the like. So uh, that's a real important part. Sixth is building relationships. You know, oftentimes it's people who, you know, do things that are hard sometimes. And when they know that they've got somebody else's back and they have your back, you're more than likely to sort of do things that that you can become uncomfortable. Uh, I, I should say that you can become comfortable at being uncomfortable when you know that you're doing things with others. And so building relationships is really important. And being a part of this and being a, an individual leader and move to men at a local level, in part by connecting with others, is not only to do the work, but to you know build that solidarity with one uh, another as human beings. And last, it's sort of connected, is we tend to think that this work is all about out there, and certainly out there is important in, in working on the organization, but out there is inextricably connected to in here. And we like to think that do helps us as individuals 
individuals be better people. And it's a misnomer to believe, as oftentimes some people do all involved in any kind of work, doing any kind of volunteer, because I got all kind of hang ups myself. I'm not a perfect person. I don't, you know, I don't uh, know how to do this and that. Well, baloney. You oftentimes learn these things by doing them. And, and oftentimes by doing them where you learn from doing things rightly and doing things sometimes not rightly, that goes along with it. So it's so important to be a better person by being involved uh, out there and being engaged with others. There's so much you learn about yourself. So those are the sort of what I think are the seven ways of extending our effort that you as a person who wants to help out by being a local leader can uh, do one, two, three, or more, whatever is comfortable for you. So thanks so much. Um, so the main thing that we do is push for the We the People Amendment, which we've talked a little bit about. Um, the basis is that corporations are not people. Money's not free speech, as you heard in the intro song to this, um, which is now HJR uh, 54. And we have 56 co-sponsors so far. Um, our goal for this year is 100. Uh, last year, I believe we had uh, in the 80s. So we're make, we're climbing our way up there. Um, and how we do our legislative work is really by connecting with people uh, who have, you know, our volunteers, um, people interested in this work, and trying to lobby their Congress people to sign on as a co-sponsor. So being connected again is another thing that is super important to our work and is really what pushes it. Um, I guess, is there any questions you have about our legislative work, about the amendment, about how we kind of go about that? All right. Greg, do you want to take it from there for the... All right. Yeah. So I wanted to share with you a couple of different uh, projects and activities that we're involved in. Again, uh, this is sort of a uh, smorgasbord that we're presenting. And, uh, you know, you can take a nibble at uh, a few of these or just pass on any of them if uh, they don't work for you. But two of the things that, or three of the things I'm going to uh, talk about first is uh, we do some legal work. We um, have a committee. It's called Law and Research. And uh, this grouping that's been around quite a number of years, almost since the beginning, in one way, shape or form, are people who have either a legal background, formal legal background, or who are just interested uh, in all of this and to learn more. And so many of us, I certainly have no formal uh, legal background, and many of us in the uh, uh, group do not. Uh, but we uh, have been involved in this effort to do research in trying to put together uh, documents and materials, whether they're written form or audiovisual uh, or anything else that tries to take this very complicated issue of corporate constitutional rights and money is free speech and put them in simple terms without being simplistic. Um, and so that's really important. We meet monthly. It's something that, uh, man, we're always learning something uh, about uh, whether it's, it's uh, something, again, that's been buried in the past or just trying to connect uh, what's happening currently with uh, the fact and making connections between how metaphorically we really can't get past first base on many of the issues we care about unless we abolish uh, these uh, twin constitutional bizarre doctrines of money of speech and uh, a corporation being a person. So some of our work is trying to, to contextualize that, make the connections, take an issue, and show how it is linked to move to men. So it's interesting. It's not necessarily for everybody, but for people who want to sort of deep dive into that, that is a, a possibility. And uh, so there are some people who are have in the past and uh, presently connected uh, their local uh, move to med activists. Others have just been sort of individuals on our mailing list who aren't involved in any other uh, work, but really are interested in that national work. Uh, a second project is something that we call MEETS, M-E-E-T, which stands for Movement Education and Empowerment Talks. These are uh, formalized um, programs, uh, virtual, that uh, we've put together and that we offer 
And what we try to do with them uh, is, you know, they're, they're excuses, if you will, for people at a local level who, whether it's a formal group, whether it's a bunch of your friends who just want to get together and learn more, and uh, we're more than happy to do, you know, uh, try to get four or five people at least. Uh, more than that is fine. Uh, don't necessarily need a lot of people. And we will come to you in terms of a virtual gathering uh, and talk about the work, uh, answer any questions, engage in discussion, talk about what you can do. We oftentimes try, if possible, to include someone from your local area who is working on some other issue of importance, uh, some you know, issue campaign that uh, by, again, ending corporate rule and getting big money out of elections would make their job and make their work much easier to accomplish. And so it's a way to sort of bring to life in a local way, a group that you may already be familiar with, but may not necessarily understand that the work they're doing is really connected to the work that we're doing. Because oftentimes, let's face it, talking about corporate constitutional rights and money elections can really bring the eyes uh, to glaze over. When you talk about healthcare, we're talking about education, we're talking about minimum wage, we're talking about preserving the planet. I mean, those are things that people can latch on to and are you know, real justice in all of its forms, poster children for what it is that we're trying to accomplish. So anyway, those are uh, projects that again, we uh, offer. And if you're interested, uh, bring a couple of people together, friends, family, neighbors, whatever, more than happy to uh, put something together and can tailor uh, the comments uh, to uh, your local community based on whatever the, the hot button issue may be or a, a group that is working right now that would be great to uh, connect with. All right, so third then, uh, uh, arena of work that we do is more formalized uh, organizing in which we try intentionally to have individuals be individual sort of uh, Johnny or Jane Appleseeds, if you will. Uh, individuals who are representing Move to Amend as an individual, not as a group, uh, a member of a group, but just simply as a person who may already be, you may already be connected to one or more local uh, organizations. And so by wearing a move to amend hat, there's a little bit of formal training involved, what that accomplishes and what that allows you to do that furthers our work is as previously mentioned, you being sort of an ambassador and to be able to bring some of the materials, some of the organizing strategy, letting people know about the We the People Amendment, uh, combining sort of helping people understand what we're trying to do, as well as by being part of that group, finding out what they're doing and act and giving your solidarity to that work and working and trying to find the connections. And at some point after developing some trust uh, in you, that group that you maybe have already been a part of, may feel comfortable and willing to have you speak on behalf of uh, Move to Amend as an advocate about what Move to Amend does. So that is kind of the work of an individual advocate. If you really want a more deep dive organizationally, you can help and we can help you find some other colleagues where you are to form a formal, what we call affiliate. And so this is a collection of you got to start with like a minimum of, I think, five people and then filling out sort of a form that gives to us sort of what your responsibilities are in terms of genuinely reflecting the move to amend mission and uh, values and program. And then we pledge to you sort of mutual accountability. You're accountable to us and we are accountable to you in making sure that we are giving you every opportunity to thrive and to survive, more than survive, but to thrive as a self-standing affiliate and to do the work and, and invite you to our monthly calls, uh, help with training, be available to help really uh, do the work that uh, Gene previously mentioned uh, was being supplied in part through this example of Jenny. 
Uh, so those are the exam. That's an example of the kind of support that we can offer to you as a formal group. But that does take some initiative on your part, again, with some help on our part to try to find a couple of others. But you may already know a few people. And here is where that one on one relationship is so important. Yes, we can send out, you know, an email blast. We can send out a tweet. We can post something on Facebook, not to take away from any of that. But, you know, high touch has its place. High, high, tech, tuck, um, high tech, I should say, has its place, but so does high touch. And that's where connecting with people you already know is so important. And people who may be interested in somebody that they know. That whole sort of Tupperware phenomena, if you remember those days, where one person connects with another person, connects with another person. Hey, that stuff never goes out of style. And having relationships will never go out of style. Human beings, it's within our DNA that goes back millennia to be connected to others. So great to do the technical stuff, but no substitute for the individual. And that's really as good of a place to start if you are interested in helping form a group. Oh, that's a lot about um, people that you know uh, and kind of forming those stronger connections. But how about people you don't know, um, which is where petitioning comes into play. So this is a good tool to use if you are at a table, if you're tabling at an event, you can do it at any event, a farmer's market, a conference, a you know, meeting for another place. You know, I saw people tabling at Pride. Um, and this is just a way to get names and numbers of people who are interested and understand and want to know more about the issue. So petitions are great. And we can put the link. It's mutuamend.org slash petition. Has all of the things that you will need. Um, we even have a script. We have uh, what to do, how to, you know, various ways to send your petitions. Um, and this is a great way to get names and numbers of people who are interested. Um, and once you have people who are interested, you can move on from there, see what people's capacity are, see what their interests are, um, how to continue that conversation and build those stronger connections uh, with folks. And um, petitions are a great way to also kind of help yourself uh, learn more. You know, there's nothing better than having someone ask you questions to, to know what questions you've been needing to ask yourself. Um, so we we'll definitely recommend petitioning. And it's one of the many things that we have a plethora of information resources on. I think I'll pass it off to uh, Katie to talk about fundraising. Hi, I'm Katie. I'm the newest member to uh, Move to Amend. And first of all, I'd like to thank our volunteers because you guys are such an important part of passing this monumental um, amendment that is life-changing, game-changer. Um, I'm here in Pensacola. And uh, my role is to continue what we've been doing very successfully, but also to add some new ways to generate money to um, fund these uh, projects that we have going on, the educational projects, the literature that we pass out. And I am always looking for, if you see something when you're out that strikes you, that could be something we could use. I'll put my, um, my email in here and you guys can just let me know. I would appreciate it. And I'm really looking forward to working with everybody in the future. It's very exciting. It, um, as a new member, I get a real, I always have followed Move to Amend, but when you go behind the scenes, you see how hard people work and the tech behind it and how dedicated everything is. It's such a great organization. It's something to be very proud of, to um, be affiliated with this organization. And I'll pass to Jenny. <laughs> Thank you so much, Katie. Um, I really appreciate um, all of y'all be, being here. 
Um, I just wanted to move on to like more of a question in, in um, answer period, what kind of things you're most interested in working with, um, if any of the things that we've mentioned interest you, um, you know, whether it's working on the legislative work, which is very important, you know, that is the flagship campaign, a move to amend, um, getting the We the People Amendment passed um, in the House. And, you know, we're on target to get our 100 co-sponsors this year um, with 56. It, was, it wasn't it was introduced until April, so it gave us a little bit of um, a slower lag time to start. But since being reintroduced, um, you know, the team and people on the ground have been really diligent in getting their reps on board. Um, so we're organizing meetings all across the nation right now. Also, you know, again, the petitioning is so important because that is where we show power when we go to our legislators, right? This is, um, uh, it's it, it's just a simple act. It's a great way to break into the conversation with somebody. Um, you know, do you, are you familiar with the We the People Amendment? You know, we're we're gonna we are going to amend the Constitution. So, um, you know, getting folks on board. I, I've never met anybody that's like, no, I think corporations are people and they should be able to control <laughs> our democracy. I've never heard that. And um, so, and and also, you know, it's a great way to start the education process and deepening people's awareness of the issue because we all know there's problems, but a lot of folks don't realize what those problems are based upon, what that foundational um what what foundation they built to fix and to rig our system, right? So um I, I, is there anything that um and and, and I want to ask you, Jeff and Jean, is there anything in particular that you that interests you most about what we're doing in these areas? Uh, for me, it's mostly the need to really start with this particular topic before anything else uh, can move forward. Um, for example, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of initiatives to 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 fight the the fossil fuel uh, lobbies, and there are climate groups. Uh, CCL is one of them that is really fighting hard against fossil fuel. But with without being able to break down this wall where the corporations are already having the upper hand, um, too many things are just being stuck. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, that's that's what brought me to move to amend is that, you know, I was involved with all of these different, you know, justice and it, specifically environmental, uh, with environmental focus, um, and couldn't get anywhere, couldn't get anywhere until I started learning about corporate constitutional rights. And then it made it it actually made perfect sense to me after that. And I realized this is where how how you get to the root. Um, so I definitely agree with you there. Um, what type of uh, strengths or skills do you think that you bring that that might um, help get this? for you to help push this on envelope forward. Is I I have been uh pretty active locally um with climate action type of organizations. So uh, just being able to mobilize local local groups here in uh, in the state of Michigan, uh, more specifically here in Detroit. I've also I've also actually been to Washington DC with CCL to meet with uh, uh, senators and Congress people um, and just sit down and, and discuss things with their aides and their staff members on, on a very nonpartisan way. And I think for the most part, even a lot of the uh, conservative side of the table, there are a lot of more libertarian leaning folks in Congress and in the Senate than can, that, that would actually support something like this. 
um, because many of them do not want money to muddy the waters also. Uh, they're always they're always chiming about about uh, trying to follow the money trail, trying to follow the money trail here, follow the money trail there. They a lot of conservatives do not like money um, causing a lot of things that uh, they are fighting against also. So there's a lot of common ground to be had. Absolutely. And when when this issue comes to um, like a, a voter referendum, then overwhelmingly, both on um, both sides of the diconic spectrum, we have um, overwhelming support because, you know, folks know that there's a problem. We haven't been as successful getting Republican legislators to sign on because there has been two schools of thought within the Republican Party. Um, for example, when Citizens United, when that decision came down, uh, there was a McCain was uh, adamantly against it and wrote an am amicus curious it, um, you know, against uh, the decision that was ultimately made. And then Mitch McConnell, of course, uh, wrote one in favor. So um you know there's two schools of thought within the republican party but um but we are definitely nonpartisan and we still um lobby elected officials um on both sides of the spectrum i wanted to share um i shared in the chat uh the ecology network that's um <clears throat> this is a space recently created where um we focus on that relationship that you're talking about uh, between corporate power and environmental catastrophe. And that's where we meet once a month um, to hold space and folks can come and share what they're doing and the work that they're doing in their communities and see if there's any resources that we have um, in ways that we can stand in allyship and um, in solidarity with the work that's going on across the country um, in the environmental sphere. Um, like I said, I came to it with that kind of lens. Um, Alvonso, too, he was just in D.C. Um, working really hard to uh, lobby our elected officials um, for the We the People Amendment. But he also went there standing in solidarity with uh, the climate, um, the Citizens Climate Lobby, the CCL. Um, so there's there's a lot of overlap, right? And ideally, we'll see this as a demand in every um, in every environmental group. But it's also about building those relationships. Again, um, the, it, it, it's going to take a lot of us working together, understanding the issues, and um, and coming together on the solutions. And we believe that a lot of times people sit around, oh, what can we do? What can we do? The We the People Amendment is something that we can do. Um, how did you first hear about Move to Amend, if you don't mind me asking? Jeff? All right, yeah, yeah. Yep. That's where I was trying to look for the mute button. Yeah. <laughs> a similar problem? I, I, saw, uh, I saw a post, actually a Facebook post from uh, Move to Amend, and and I thought that I'm pretty intrigued by what it could do. I also look at some other parallel groups such as uh, Wolfpack. I think Wolfpack does something similar. Um, and there's another group, I can't remember the name now. So there are a few organizations that are kind of trying to do similar things here. And, and Move to a Man is, uh, I guess, more grassroots and have a pretty good traction, especially with a uh, representative uh, Jayapal. So um, I think that that's helpful. And I think recently even uh, Katie Porter is on board. So, th so that's good. So that's a lot of strong traction. Absolutely. Um, and they've both been longtime supporters um, for the We the People Amendment. Um, so we recognize that this is not a sprint. And you mentioned a couple of other groups. Uh, the Wolf Pack, of course, is more looking at um, the uh, Title V convention, right? Am I pronouncing it correctly or classifying it? 
Article 5. Article 5. I knew I was blowing it up there. Um, Article 5 convention, which hasn't um, hasn't been done since, you know, the very, very early days of the Constitution. We're not opposed to that. Um, but uh, we have decided to go the amendment route. Um, of course, our amendment, we do have some comparisons to some of those other proposed amendments from organizations. And like you said, we are grassroots. We're grassroots funded, we're grassroots worked, we're grassroots um, organized. And a lot of those organizations that you're talking about have kind of spiraled off from move to amend um, in that it's in, in our opinion, a little bit more watered down versions. Um, they either only go to um, money in elections, which, you know, money is free speech it, money does not equal free speech in any realm and shouldn't. And of course, um, they there's some that just want to overturn Citizens United. And the problem with corporate personhood um, or corporate constitutional rights goes back, you know, over 100 years. So just doing that isn't going to change, right? Corporations have hijacked the First Amendment, the Fourth Amendment, the Fifth Amendment, 14th Amendment. Um, so all of these insane no doctrines um, and, and cases must be um, reversed in order for us to have a, a real functioning democracy. Um, I, you said you're in Michigan and Detroit area? Yes, in, uh, in Detroit. Yeah, they've uh, there's been some serious redlining there too on frontline communities type work. Um, what type of things uh, motivate you to take action? Oh boy, I mean, there's too many social justice uh, issues out there, right? We we're dealing with uh, we're dealing with gun tr gun control situations. We are dealing with women's rights. Um, we, we're dealing with uh, the, the trans community. Uh, obviously, we're dealing with climate. Um, so there, there are there are so many, so many things that we we notice isn't right. Um, and so many organizations are trying to do do what they can. Um, but uh, it, it always runs against the same wall, and it's the <laughs> wall against um, corporate uh, lobby groups. Um, I have, can I ask a question? Sure. Yeah, I had a question both for Jeff and then a separate question for Gene. Um, Jeff, you being involved in the CCL work, um, who's your congressperson, if I may ask? I am in the district of uh, John James, um, but I am also very familiar with the other Congress people in the area, uh, from Haley Stevens to uh, Sri Tanadar. All these are, uh, and also Rashida Talib. Um, so we we have we have a lot of very progressive, uh, right, uh, Congress people in this area. If if we found a couple people, others from uh, your district, would you be willing to be a part of uh, a call, uh, a virtual call with an aide to James, is it? Representative James? Yeah, Representative John James. Yeah, to sort of tell your story about why you think this is important through the lens of, you know, the environment. Would that be something you'd be open to? You know, I, I've, we've uh, actually had many conversations with, uh, we've tried to have, many conversations with John James in the past uh, related more towards uh, electrification effort to um, to break down the uh, um, energy independence um, mm -hmm. and to have uh, permitting reform so that transmission lines and uh, clean energy infrastructure projects can actually get answers quicker. Doesn't mm -hmm. matter whether it's approved or denied, uh, but it shouldn't be sitting there just mm -hmm. idle. What I'm asking is, this would be a 
dedicated call to specifically ask Representative James if uh, uh, Representative would become a co-sponsor of the We the People Amendment. Would you be open to that? Yeah, I, I um not just by myself, but if we have no, a group, no, no, but with um, others, I, I'll be glad to join them. Yeah. Oh, cool. Could if you wouldn't mind putting your email in the chat, that'd be good. Okay. And uh, then real quick, Gene, you mentioned uh, sort of wanting to bone up um, on, I guess, communication, social media skills, I guess, is what you had said. Uh, in Absolutely. particular, I mean, can you just elaborate a bit on that? And maybe Alfonso, I mean, Alfonso is already going to get to you, I guess, for that, but just, you know, anything else on that that you hadn't shared? Or any other type of uh, skill you'd like to in increase your capacity. Gene, are right, you talking Greg, about? Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Um, we just uh, exercised our local list of petitioners heavily over the past month. And we didn't get much of a response at all. So I'm wondering, do you have anybody, any areas working on mailing list maintenance, uh, trying to qualify and vet people on the list and get them engaged, move them from passive to active? Yeah. Um, so well, it seems well, like there's a project there that we could take on to uh, to get more value out of our list. Others may have responses. I'll just make a short one. You're not going to like this answer. <laughs> oh, because, well, never mind then. All right. No, but you're not going to like it because it, there's no shortcut uh, to, you know, the whole sense of relationship building. Relationship building is on an arc. When you meet person face to face, that's your best chance of, you know, you get a sense of their energy and the like. That's the best way to connect with people. Uh, you know, next to that is really phone call you know, is we have found just across the board, I mean, it's time consuming, right? But that means you're investing energy. So there's sort of a, you know, there's a trade-off between breadth and depth. You send an email, man, you can connect with 10,000 people when you push a button, but how many people show up versus taking an hour and talking to a dozen people, you may get two people out of that dozen. So what's the better investment of time? You know, it, it's more is, I mean, the, the takeaway for me is a principle in general in our culture, more is not necessarily better. Okay. Hallelujah. More is not better. All right. Our whole society is built on endless more. You never have enough of anything, of anything, but we got to get out of that, you know, into focusing on depth and depth of relationship involves connecting with people. I mean, going to their door and knocking on their door would be the best, but that may not be as fruitful as trying to call them up. So, you know, in trying to sort of figure out where to go, you know, if each each pe person in your group took 20 names and over the next month, you're going to call 20 people and try to get them to a meeting, you know, I, I think you do better. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think that that's very sound advice. It's, it's making the connections and growing, you know, just like, you know, Gene, you and I didn't know each other a month and a half ago, right? Now I feel like I know you, you know, I feel like that we're in this together, I feel like we've become friends. Um, we are definitely colleagues and, and you know, kindred spirits. And and that's how we make the connections. Um but uh, agreed too. Sometimes that's a longer road, and you know we there is no shortcuts, and we are on that marathon. So, um, and I would happy to I'd be happy to show you um, different things about the website, different outreach techniques, and and how to um, identify folks, um, and and Zoom too. I know you don't have a lot of experience with that, so if you would like any time, we can get together, and I can. We can screen share and we can talk about it and I can show you some little tricks of the trade that makes it a little easier for you if that if that's all. I'd also like to add that um, 
one of the things I got to do today was call donors that have recently contributed. And it was so much fun. I mean, I, I feel like I have new best friends. We had such a good time. So it might seem a little daunting at first, but once you get into it, people are super nice. They want to make a difference, you know. Um, Jeff, I have this. Thanks for sharing that. I'm going, if it's okay with you, I'd like to link you in to um, the outreach we do for the Ecology Network, if that, if um, you think that's something you'd be interested in. Yeah, sure. Um, especially if it's going to be connecting with people uh, locally right here in Southeast Michigan. So we can, we, there would, there's different ways we can do that as well. Um, the Ecology Network, there's no telling. People from all over the country come and they're doing some amazing stuff, which I find to be fascinating um, to bring back to where, you know, different places where people are at, but some of the work that they're doing. I also um, want to share with both of you, we have, um, we have an event scheduled. Are you familiar with Stop Cop City that's happening in um, Atlanta currently? In, in my humble opinion, it's the most important environmental action going on in the country right now. It is, um, it, it's, <laughs> I don't even know where to begin. There's so much to this, but it is the epitome of corporate rule, if you will. And um, we have, uh, we're going to have a conversation next week um, with one of the main actors, activists in, uh, or a, a leader amongst the, uh, or the resistance that's building there, Kamu Franklin. So I wanted to share that with y'all too. Um, here, I'll put that if you want to in RSVP for that event, but um, it's not actually local work, but it is, in my opinion, some of the most important environmental actions that's going on right now. Um, well, I want to open it up uh, to any other questions that you might have or um, any thoughts you would like to leave us with. No, I think I, I'm pretty clear based on what Greg uh, explained. And uh, and I think that's why I wanted to see if there's uh, any local chapter. It's about making that connection. Um, not even not knocking on doors, at least uh, being able to send an instant message or something to someone locally that has the possibility of meeting together. Absolutely. We had a, we actually had a campaign that we did and it was um, the listening project where we just went and knocked on doors um, and to listen to how, you know, we'd ask a couple of questions, you know, about corporate rule and how it's affecting their lives. And it was so illuminating to me, um, all the different ways. And it's when I was still getting used to um, recognizing how these corporate constitutional rights are in every everybody's lives and everyday lives and how it's affecting them adversely in so many different ways. So yeah, even, even something that simple and, and getting back to that very basic grassroots um, action <clears throat> can have so much power. Any thoughts or questions? Anyone else? Okay, then. Well, thank you so much. Um, it's good to be on this journey with you as uh, Barbara Gurton, uh, one of our longtime supporters in Minnesota, always says, we're on this road, we're on this journey with real people. And um, it's an honor to be on this journey with all of y'all. And never underestimate the power of a few dedicated people to change the world. I'm quoting everybody tonight, sorry. 
<laughs> it's late here. Y'all have a wonderful evening and um, don't hesitate to reach out if there's any way we can assist um, in what you're doing. And Jeff, um, we'll be in touch with you about a meeting with your rep. And Jean, just let me know when's a good time and we can start um, assisting in any way you need. Thank you. Thank you.